You know, speaking of wealth and power, and um, I, I think I haven't played this in a while, so here we go. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. It's not just a lot of mysterious things happening. There's a lot we understand out there. And that understanding empowers you. If you base medicine on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. Elon Musk has oh, a yeah. solar roof on his house. It looks good. And it it's generation one, and he says, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look even better. <laughs> so he's got, uh, he did the Powerwall. Yeah. The Tesla Model 3 is rolling out mm-hmm. and, and is making some really rave reviews from everything that I've read. And, uh, and now the solar roof is in production and costs about twice as much as an asphalt shingle roof, but less than a terracotta shingle roof, tile roof. And how quickly will it pay for itself? Well, that depends on where you are. It depends on how much sun you can get and how many of those tiles, because not all of the glass tiles are solar. There's a percentage of them. So depending on how many you've sized out and whether or not you also have a Tesla and how you're generating all that... But if you buy into the whole ecosystem, I'd say it probably pays for itself in five years. So within half the life of the roof. Oh, wait. What was that about half the life of the roof? Because he's guaranteeing the roof for the life of the property. Oh, my. Because most roofs, they last you about 10 years. 10 to 15 years for an asphalt shingle roof for... Uh, metal roofs, you have a 50-year warranty on those. That's usually the most extreme. And the metal roofs are still more expensive than the, than the uh, solar roof. So really, if you can do a good package with this, if you can get an affordable kind of rate on it, this is the thing to do. If you are planning on making a home for yourself... In your community, this is where you're setting down roots. You're having kids. You're, you're, you're. This is where you are going to live. This is your home. This is an excellent investment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not seeing the. Th- this came out, you know, uh, today. If I would look at, uh, I'd have to look at his uh, his Twitter. I think because that's of course where where he brings everything out. But also what's, uh, what's fascinating is that they, they do tests of the shingles. These are hail balls. So in the, in the video I'm showing they've got the solar glass holding up to the shot, a slate shingle shattering, and a terracotta uh, roof tile also shattering. So it's more durable because they're all um, tempered glass. Reinforced, you know, basically they're, they're taking the Gorilla Glass that's on your phone and they're putting that on your roof. They're taking the, the glass that's on your, you know, high-performance everyday driver car. Yep. Ah, warranty and specs. I found it. Mm. Uh, tile warranty, infinity, or the lifetime of your house, whichever comes first. <laughs> Stated um, right here. That's an excellent, excellent investment. The power warranty on the solar cells is 30 years. And the weatherization warranty is 30. Yep. Also, they got best fire, fire rating, wind rating, hail rating. You know, this might even be, uh, lower your uh, your insurance. Insurance, costs. yeah. Whew. Yeah, that, this is that's really good. 
So if you're really curious, go out to tesla.com slash solar roof. And it's got all the specs right there. I mean, the, of course, there's a lot of naysayers. And you should be skeptical of such a thing because, obviously, they're trying to sell the product. But yeah. one thing about Elon Musk and the reason that I keep going back to the well with him is that he invests big back into the product. Yes, he's a wealthy man. Yes, he has a lot of idiosyncrasies and is a weird guy. But where he's putting his money where his mouth is. Well, in a way, he's more of your what the Republican Party has been hearkening back to, your you know, your 40s, 50s, 60s style businessman who... Yeah, he's has, a self-made man. He, he truly who is. has a multi-year plan. Mm-hmm. He is not our modern day businessman who is about, okay, how many profits can I generate for this next quarter? That doesn't matter. It's more what is in the best interest long term for my company. It's not how much do I generate just this quarter. It's, okay, how do I grow my company and ensure its relevance and and growth over 10 years, 20 years. That's the kind of investment he's making. Yeah. And that is the traditional business values that has made this nation great. He's he's taken uh he's taken the challenge of installing a enormous I think it was a 100,000 megawatt battery pack in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, he did that on a dare. You know, because they were saying that they were having issues. And he said, I can fix that. Here's what you'll need. And I said, oh, really? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so they made terms and did it. Um, apparently, they've got it. They got all this figured out here. They want to sell this roof. Tax credits, there's a 30% solar investment tax credit applied to the cost of the solar tiles, so not the rest of the tiles, but the solar tiles themselves, and associated solar energy equipment, as well as the cost of the Powerwall batteries. To receive the full tax credit, you must have federal income tax liability that's at least equal to the value of the tax credit. That makes sense. You, you're not going to get more money than you spend into it. Yeah. This credit may be carried over to future tax years as well. Additional state, local, or utility solar incentives may apply, but are not included in this calculation. And then they're saying monthly loan payment. Customers can choose to finance their solar roof through their home mortgage. So you just get the one, one, the one payment. The loan amount is equal to the total solar roof cost, less the estimated 30% tax credit. Monthly loan payments are amortized over the selected loan term at the selected interest rate. You know, just like you'd be paying your normal mortgage down. And I know people that have taken a 30-year mortgage and paid it down and, and got rid of it in 10 by just paying a little bit extra every month. Yeah, and also keep it in mind, with the savings that if you're in a high sun area and are getting plenty of sun, the savings that you are getting for your energy costs. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're in, in a high sun area and you don't have that many trees directly around your house, um, no, this will probably pay for itself in five to 10 years. So you still have the 30 years for the weatherization and solar guarantee. Right, and you don't have to worry about replacing your roof. Which, if you live in Florida, and oh. and you've had some high wind storms, you you will not go around and not see a house with some tarps, and you won't you're not going to see houses that have nothing but nice clean shingles. It's a problem. It's a big problem. Oh yeah. Um, so recommended tile coverage for your home. We recommend the portion of solar tiles for your roof that we estimate will produce enough electricity to cover your home energy usage. So the whole, the whole bit. 
To customize your usage, enter your average monthly electric bill. If you choose to increase the portion of your roof covered with solar tiles, your home may generate more electricity than it needs. In this case, you may not realize the full value of energy your solar roof produces. Your entire roof is not eligible to be converted with solar tiles due to building regulations and obstructions. Uh, recommended solar tile coverage is based on estimated eligible roof area for solar. So caveat, 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 but yeah, if you install this, you don't have a power bill anymore. That's also what, that's what really is going to bring down your total cost of ownership. And also for folks here in Florida, I mean, having that power wall when, you know, the power goes out on the grid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you're flicker and flash, you know, you're brownout resistant. Yeah. That's, a ma again, if I had the money and I was somebody who had multiple properties in Florida, I'd be going and putting these roofs in as many properties as possible so I could charge more for them. Yeah. Yeah. So Look um, at the investment that you have with this home. Absolutely. I mean, are you going to stay? You know, and even if you're not, it's part of the home and it is now value add on top yeah. of that home. Uh, as well as marketing value yeah, not, not not just true value, but marketing value. Mm -hmm. So um, apparently, they are overbooked essentially because they they sold out of all that they were going to be able to produce in 2017 in like 15 days. So I'm not surprised. So there's a back order. <laughs> But what they're, just like how they're planning, the same kind of production schedule as with the Tesla Model 3. You know, the, yes, there's going to be an enormous high demand and very few cars available. But then it'll go like hockey stick style with production rates. Just up, 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 up. And then it will plateau to a, here's the maximum that yeah. we can theoretically do. And also, again, this is a guy who is taking a lot of that profit and reinvesting it into either fur projects right. or back into improving the product. Yeah. And that's all part of those long-term plans. Invest in this, that generates the capital to then do this, and then to do this, and then to do this. So he's, it's all staged properly. You know, he's, he's actually executing a well-thought-out methodical strategy mm -hmm. and it's working and just think how successful industry would be if you know we made the tax code reflect you know reinvestment into your company that'd be nice oh also he's going to export the tiles to foreign countries as well which is how you really make the money yeah yeah so even once he completely plateaus at the maximum you know output He's, it'll still take decades to completely cover the world. And he's, he's aware that it's going to be one of those, you know, a little bit at a time because people change their, you know, are only redoing their roof every, you know, maybe 10, 15, 25 years, depending. So, but, you know, um, if some home builders out there happen to get on, on board, instead of all those terracotta tiles going in on those nice fancy houses or you know geez yeah it for some of these subdivisions that are all over central florida yeah a builder going hey can we do the entire community with these roofs yeah the entire community the entire community is energy neutral I'm just thinking as a builder, how much of a tax credit can I get from both the state, they would, county, and federal government? Well, they would also get LEED certification, too, for green homes. Yep. I mean, just, oh, the incentives are there 
and it's almost like they're low hanging fruit. the The problem is that FPL and Constellation Energy, I believe, and Progress Energy, and mm-hmm. all the major energy pr- producers are all putting big money into preventing this from happening. Instead of embracing it and trying to outpace it. They're trying to make it where it is illegal for you to do this. Essentially, the thing that they're, they're arguing, and it's a weak argument, a very weak argument, is that an improperly installed system would then have the potential to feed back power into our system and cause outages. Except that... I believe it was federal regulations, already required all of them to have smart grid technology and smart meters on every home. And it's it's... in their best interest to do so because it's easier for them to monitor the amount of power. So it's not that they haven't upgraded because they already have. They've already upgraded most of their meters because it's better for them to run their business, even if their business doesn't change. It's still better for them to have it. But because they have it, they are completely capable of having a feedback system in place where you would feed power back into the system, essentially providing you credits. And then on the time when you're at at peak, you would basically be drawing those credits back out. The, the real problem, of course, for them is that due to the way that they generate power, you have to have enough capacity running at almost all times to be able to reach your peak power needs. So all of those generators, all those generator facilities have to be ready to go. And that's a sunk cost. They have to do that. And off-peak hours, they can turn off some of them, and they can switch fuels. So um, at one of the power plants that we have in central Florida, it's very visible right off the 528 Beach Line Expressway heading from Orlando out to Cocoa Beach, where you'd hit your cruise terminals and things like that, out to the Space Center. Uh, During the day, they run diesel. It's a diesel power generation facility. They do that because the diesel burns cleaner and doesn't produce quite the smoke out of the towers. As soon as the sun starts going down, they switch over to coal. Because coal isn't clean. And it's cheaper. And it's cheaper. So for that, it's all aesthetics. But that's how that business runs. And it's a dirty business. So the more people reduce the need for them, it takes money out of their pockets because then they can't have, they can't justify all the things that they've done. They still wow. have to, they still have to have the power distribution center. They still yeah. have to have the power generation equipment because not everybody's going to want to be on solar. And even those that people that are on solar are still going to occasionally need to tap the network because it's also illegal to not be on the network. Yeah, because they passed that law too. Yeah. You have to, if you own a property, that property has to be electrified. It also has to be connected to city utilities if available. So if they run uh, city water past your property, you have to be tapped into that. And you would have to pay an access fee for that. That's written into the law. Now, you can never use a drop, but there's still going to be an access fee. You still have to be part of the system. It's, And if you don't, then they'll put a lien on your property and evict you. Because that has happened. That's been part of the part of and, our, our legal history here in the in, and what in Florida. part of that is supporting the free market. Oh, there's no free market in this because it's a monopoly. 
and there's also no free market in a public utility like that because in the mo- in most cases it's a dot gov <laughs> that's running it in the first place now i did live in a little city called taft in orlando and they had a they had their own water tower and there was a different um a different agency that was providing the water and we were also all on septic so the water was cheap because we weren't paying sewer fees also tasted pretty good because they also did their own treatment so the, there are benefits to having companies that are able to do that but you only have one pipe coming into your house you can't choose to get your water from somewhere else you only have one power cable coming into your house unless you have solar You know, you only have one option. It's by its nature. It has to be a monopoly. Monopolies, if they're going to exist, need to be government agencies. Because just like with healthcare, if there's a company there that's there to profit off of you, they're always going to seek their best interest and not your own. Yep. And, and monopolistic behavior, as we've seen in the past, we have a long history that we can look at. Monopolistic behavior is a net negative for consumers. It's bad. There's not enough competition. There's no need for them to change their prices to make also, them better for you. No need to innovate. Yeah. None of that. So, I mean, at least if you have... If you do have a large enough monopoly, you do eventually have to innovate because simply technology does march forward. But it's slow. It's a much slower progression, and the necessity isn't there. But we've all... Part of the free market strategy is that it fosters innovation. It fosters growth and competition. But you don't have that in monopolistic environments such as power water you know, your basic utilities which is why also you've got the net neutrality thing with you know if you yes. if you, you got to treat that as a utility because do you have options you've got your phone provider to provide a pathetic dsl that doesn't meet the the federal broadband regulations you've got the cable providers, which are now all monopolies and have ha- had monopolistic tendencies anyway, because yeah. they they simply don't enter into that area. So then they can't they don't have to compete. They carve themselves out and they have agreements with each other. It's price fixing. Which should be illegal and they should be prosecuted for. Right. But it's merely a gentleman's agreement, essentially. So it's it would be very difficult. You know, it's it's clear that it's happening, but when it comes down to the law, it's difficult to difficult to um, yeah prosecute. So, am I a socialist for thinking that you know government agencies aren't interested in making a profit, therefore they can service the industry better? Is that socialism or is that common sense? Can it be both? It might be both. Yeah. No. Well, it, it, in its own way, it's socialistic because you are acknowledging that the government has a part to play in this specific industry. Um, yeah. and, but you're right. Monopolies do not help the consumer. They are there to exploit the consumer. Yeah. Now, that, that also doesn't mean that just because it's a government agency – doing it, providing the service, that doesn't mean that there's not room for corporate America in that arena still. Because the government's merely going to orchestrate things. And like in an orchestra, the guy with the wand that's orchestrating things isn't the guy on the tuba. He isn't the guy on the violin. Not the person blowing into the piccolo. All of those people are part of the free market. They're merely service agents for the thing that is providing the service to the people. 
They're independent contractors. But this is why you need government regulation. Yeah. So there's arguments to be made, obviously. And hopefully that you've found us uh, uh, intelligent and, and compelling. And you will seek office. And you will run those negative ads. <laughs> <laughs> they may hurt you morally. They may, yeah. you know, scuff the soul, as it were. But they work. Because, okay. again... As we've even had people on here, conservatives are are governed by fear and emotion. Yeah, and emotional appeals work in politics, and you must be willing to use that that tool mm-hmm. if you want to win in politics. Yeah, politics, by its nature, is a dirty business. You know, it's it's not meant to leave you with a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's a no. it's a dirty kind of thing. So. If you feel warm and fuzzy after you're, you've been in politics, I think you did it wrong. You politicked wrong if you did that. Maybe? Maybe a little bit? <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> but, no, it, it's... But by all means, again, if nothing else you take away, read, learn, and use. Mm-hmm. You, you, you clearly, have clearly it's rest- difficult it's not it's not an easy thing that we ask no. you to do but things but that are worthwhile seldom are be that there is value in being a good citizen mm-hmm. yep there there have been many comments um because a lot of people are selfish by nature okay yes. so they're they don't want to pay school taxes if they don't have children you know i've seen that argument before yeah but i've seen the counter argument and i have to agree with it. the counter argument to that and and that's the one that you need to remember folks is that if you don't pay for education you end up with stupid politicians you are then in your golden years when you are in need of government services the most you are then relying on stupid people that you didn't make sure that they got a good education. I don't want to be, I don't want to be governed by idiots. I want them to be literate. I want them to be well-read and educated. You want, when you are at your most vulnerable for everyone who is working in the system that you are forced to participate in, Mm -hmm. To be scholarly good citizens. To be the most competent people available. That's why you pay for schools. That's the whole reason. That's the whole reason. Not to mention, it's just the right thing to do. But even from the selfish standpoint, yeah. it, it, is, it behooves your quality of life. Yes. For people to be educated. It also behooves your life expectancy. Yes. To be a part of an educated society. Mm Mm-hmm. But these are also the same people that sometimes don't recognize the value of a vaccinated population to those that are unvaccinated. Herd resistance is incredibly vital for the survival of the species. Yes. And I think education is its own form of inoculation. You are absolutely correct. So I think it's almost the same argument. That's actually a great way to frame it. Yeah. You, mm. you, you keep the viral ideas of, of disinformation, lack of thought, groupthink. Fascism fascism <laughs> you you inoculate society by having an educated populace it's and it's necessary if you wish to have a nice time in the end end years of your life or even in the mid years in fact any year of your life yeah no it, it's it really behoo- important <laughs> it behooves you individually for the society that you are living in to be an educated one also, one that appreciates the arts. The arts yeah. enrich 
and inspire. And mm-hmm. that helps with education, innovation, and again, life quality of life and life expectancy. Yeah. Was it Churchill that that uh, made yes. mention that if we don't have the arts, what are we fighting for? Yes, that was Churchill. And yeah. no. I paraphrased, obviously. Yeah, but it, it's yeah. it's a reason why we continue to live and breathe the enrichment of the soul, mm-hmm. poetry, music, art, the creative spirit. Whether it's a macaroni painting from 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 a small child to a Rembrandt, mm-hmm. it does something good for the soul it enriches the mind it enriches life yep we are thinking creatures and and we enjoy something beautiful whether it's words notes or 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 something to look at this this is just a part of the human experience we should embrace it encourage it and hold on to it for our lives and i think that that is a perfect place to end. So if you've enjoyed what we've done here today and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways to do that. You can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash radio and get perks and maybe early access or at least access to things that aren't available in the normal stream. You can also make those algorithms work for us by reviewing us on iTunes or giving us those many star ratings on whatever system you happen to be listening to us on. And use your words. Tell somebody about us. And of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com. Or if you're the more talkative sort, we have a voice line number at 470-222-ORLY. That's 6759, and it's always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you and your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Uncomptech.com. And for those of you that are curious, the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license is a share-alike attribution. So as long as you are sharing the work, you can make derivative copies as long as you link back to us, mention who we are, things like that, as long as you are not just reproducing our content for your own financial gain. That's how Creative Commons works, and there's a link in the show notes. So enjoy that, and we hope that you've enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week, and I'll work really hard on trying to get everything out. We had some glitches last week, so I've got some problems with that one. All right. See you later, guys. Peace. And that's a wrap, Jack. Yep. Killing the output to Twitch. Thank you all for listening and watching, if in fact you have. I think there was one person out there. Probably my girlfriend. And I love her for it, so that's awesome. Yes, we we did much, much soapboxing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the, the way to do it. Though in other, like, incredibly minor news... Uh, just just to let you let you know um scotland just experienced an earthquake mm. uh and, which they haven't had really experienced since 1986 um Ooh, okay that was a four on the richter scale so relatively mild but oh hey uh Mm. And um, the primary drones that are used by the U.S. military are being pulled for cybersecurity threat reasons. Uh Uh-oh. 
Now, the main producer, DJI, uh, is a Chinese-based company. Wait, DJI is making drones for the United States? Because I know DJI does the DJI Phantoms as the uh, the the consumer, you know, photography platforms. No, they they also make uh, deployable reconnaissance drones for the United States military. Huh. How about and that? they're all being pulled due to a cybersecurity threat, which was noted in a Army testing uh, document which is still classified, and a Navy memo. Well, that should be interesting. Hmm. I'm not sure what I think about that. Yeah, but those were like some of the minor things that I found. Not enough to really, you know, get your teeth into and draw out, but just, well, that that's something that's happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Okay, well, I think uh, I think that is a wrap. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and shut things down, stop the recordings.